When you're making a game with Godot, you're going to compose it of a bunch of things called scenes. Scenes are a tree of nodes which contain your game UI and objects and such. It's so common that you're going to need to switch between these scenes, but it's not immediately apparent when you start using the engine how to do so. So let's just get right into it and talk about scene switching in Godot. I've got a Node2D scene here, and we're going to call it level 1. I'm just going to add a label so that we can visually distinguish between them. I'm going to call it level 1. And we'll just make it a bit bigger here so we can see it. So that's level one. We'll save this as a level one scene and run our game. Now, if you had a game like a platformer or some kind of game and you got to the end of the level, you might want to switch the scene to level two. Or maybe you have a main menu where you can choose which scenes you switch to. So let's go ahead and we'll duplicate this in the file system and we'll call it level two. We'll open level two as a separate scene. So now you see level one here, level two. Let's rename the root node here and let's change our label here. And now if we just run just the level two scene, we have level two. Let's make it so we can switch between level one and level two. There's a few ways to go about this and they have different pros and cons and there's like an ultimate kind of like um, fancy pants version we're gonna build at the end. So let's start with the first step. We'll do the second step and then we'll do the fancy pants version. Okay, so we're back in level one. Let's add a button. And I don't know if you would have a button in your game. You might uh, might be in gameplay, it might be a button. It really just depends on what your game needs. So we're gonna add this button, switch to level two. And regardless of how you do it, you're gonna have to, regardless of what your game needs, you're gonna have to do it in a script. And uh, so let's attach a script to the root node here. <clears throat> We'll just clear this stuff out because we don't need it right now. Back in our inspector, click the button. Let's rename it to uh, level two button, just because that'll give us a nice naming. And we're gonna click into signals, select press, double click it. On level two button press, connect it to our level one script. And here's all we need to do is you call get tree, this gets the tree of the scene, which then gives you access to a bunch of different functions. As always, you can control, or if you're on Mac, command click and view and learn more about the scene tree. And the main function we're gonna call now is change scene to file. And you can see it's already auto-completing some of the options of our scenes we could switch to from file. We're gonna choose level two, save it, let me make that a bit bigger. Save it, run our game, switch to level two. We're in level two, it was that easy. It seems like it might be a scary thing to do, but it's really just get tree, change scene to file, and you pass in a string of the scene you wanna to change to. And then when you press the button, Godot handles this and uh, switches the scene accordingly. And then we can actually, when we're running our game, You'll see here there's this remote debug. You may not have seen this before, or this remote scene. It shows what's running in our game. So when we click switch to level two, you see over here, that changed to level two. And this is just, this remote scene view is just a nice way to verify what's running and uh, the, stat of, the status of things. And you can even click and view um, properties and you can even toggle them in your running game as opposed to your local scene builder. So that's just a little brief aside. Okay, great. Now let's make it so that our level two button exists. And now uh, we'll just quickly create a new one. Level one button. We'll attach a script. Yeah, da 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 da. Connect the signal, right? There's other ways to go about this that would have been we could have duplicated what we have, but let's just wire it up and go the basic simple route. Copy this over, let me make it big. Just change this to level one. Godot tries to help us. So now we can switch back and forth between the scenes. Well, no. I didn't drag our new button 
I didn't give our button a switch to level one. There we go. Run our game. We can switch back and forth. Hmm. Why is that not working? On level one button toggled, button pressed. Oh, I connected the wrong, the uh, wrong signal. Sure did. Um, disconnect all. Pressed is what we want. Sorry about that. Okay. This is why we test things. We've got a little bit more indentation than we want. Let's run that again and test it. Switch, 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 switch. Great, it's working. Okay, so that was the first way and a totally fine way. But something that isn't ideal is that the way this is referenced as a scene, if we rename the scene, it might not rename it here, and it's a little brittle that it's a, a uh, string. So something we can do is we can actually make a variable, and we can say export var uh, level two scene, and we'll give it a type of pack scene. And then instead of saying get tree change scene to file, you can call change scene to packed. And then we can just pass in level two scene. And then what you can then do is in the inspector, in our level one, see now we see level two scene and has empty. You can just quick load and through the user interface, select the scene. And now if we run it in level one and click the button, it switches it to level two. And uh, so there are two different approaches to going about this. You can do a file way and code it yourself. And maybe this switching change scene to file happens dynamically and the path is determined based upon maybe like, you know, like maybe you had a variable current level and it was set to one and you did something like plus current level plus, you know, like you did something like that, where you're dynamically determining the level based upon some data. That's one way you can go about it is uh, using change scene to file. So it really depends on your game's needs and what you prefer um, for these two approaches. Sometimes it's nice to be able to go into the inspector and select your screen and drive things out via the inspector and the GUI, the, the user interface. Sometimes it's nice to handle things through code. Depends on your game's needs, but just know that those options exist. And um, so that's, those are the basic ways of switching scenes. And that'll get you pretty far at the start. But the Godot docs, which I'll put a link in the description about, outline a kind of more advanced approach to scene switching that I want to show. So I'm going to back up this code for the purposes of sharing it in the GitHub gist in the description. And now we're going to go and we're going to approach this in a slightly different way. And this is totally just based on the Godot docs. And, uh, you know, if they've got it good and nice, then we're going to just do what they do. So they recommend adding an auto load constant. They called it global. I'm going to call it scene switcher. So click add. Whoops. What do we want? Scene switcher. There we go. So leave the path empty because we don't have the scene. Name it scene switcher. This will create an auto load constant singleton as a global variable that we can then access throughout our code. So now in scene switcher.gd, we'll get rid of this stuff. Well, we actually, we want ready. And um, what the Godot docs, what we're trying to basically get is scene switcher dot uh, go, you know, switch scene. 
they call it something different. I prefer this naming. Um, and then we'll take a path, you know. This is what we're trying to get to, to call in our code. And we'll follow along with uh, what their docs recommend to uh, get that set up. So store the current scene in a variable and it sets to defaults to null. Then we'll say the root is equal to get tree dot root. So that's the root node in our scene. And then we'll set our variable for current scene is equal to the root get child root dot get child count minus one. So that just sets it to the first scene at the root of our running game. And we can even um, do something like print debug current scene so that we can see that that's working. So let's just go ahead and run this, run our game and see what that does. So you can see our game booted and then our print debug output level one. And that's our node 2D and that's our scene level one, which is our current running scene. So that's great. We feel like that's pretty accurate. And then now what we'll do is we'll code this function that we want to add, right? We'll call func switch scene and um, we'll call it I want to call it resource path because that's ultimately what we're going to um, handle passing to it. And with the Godot docs recommended, I wanted to explain this further, is they recommend using call deferred, which says call something at the end of the current you know, game loop so that whatever is running can finish processing. That way we're not interrupting things. And here are the docs. Calls the method during idle time. And this is uh, when you call queue free on a resource in Godot, that's doing something very similar. And then what we do is we code up deferred switch scene. And we also take a res path. And it's uh, pretty simple from there. We call current scene.free. That releases it. And then what we'll do is we'll take our new scene and we'll load it. And we'll just say load res path. We'll take and set our current scene variable from our scene switcher. And we'll say s dot instantiate, instantiate. So let me instantiate an instance of our loaded scene. We set it to current scene. And then we get tree root and we add child current scene because we've updated it. And we can say get tree current scene is equal to current scene. So now we can make use of our new function in our code here. So here we'll just say scene switcher dot switch scene and we'll pass it in our resource and we'll zoom out and uh, make it so we're in level two's code and we can just drag in this to get the resource path. And then in level two, sorry. Yeah, I was in level one. So we got to fix that make this level one in the level two code. Kind of confusing with this level one, level two stuff. Now you can see it's switching, but it's waiting to do it until it's idle and not in the middle of the current running game loop. And so this is the preferred way to go about it, uh, according to Godot's docs. And uh, it makes sense logically. And we have a nice API where you can just call scene switcher dot switch scene and um, you could even say switch to, you know, you could call it whatever you want it to. So you would just take this fancy pants scene switcher or do those simple versions if you're just working pretty quickly. But yeah, drop in the scene switcher and just make use of it. And uh, you can go ahead and change your game scenes as needed. Now there 
is something you might need for bigger games, which is like a loading bar or a progress bar. And that's beyond the scope of this video, but something I want to cover in the future. Hope this helped with how to switch scenes in Godot, showed three different ways to go about it. And I would, I would recommend going this last route and just taking the code from the GitHub gist in the description of the video and adding your auto load constant, right? Just go to project settings, auto load, just set the path to the script and uh, you'd be good to use it throughout your entire game. All right, thanks.